when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Our God is a loving and compassionate and merciful God. And it's an all-powerful love that He has for us. But He loves us so much that He cannot allow any hint of sin to be present on that day. In heaven, there will be no sin. There will be complete separation of the righteous and the unrighteous. And those who are considered to be righteous will be saved not only from the consequences of their sin, but they will be saved from the very presence of sin. Absolute perfection in heaven. And so as we look at that passage, the question is, how is Jesus going to make that determination? Who is on the left and who is on the right? Who are the sheep and who are the goats? And I think a very simple answer to that question is the fact that sheep will act like sheep and goats will act like goats. How we treat each other, Jesus is saying, is a direct representation of how we treat Jesus, of how our relationship with Jesus looks. Do we feed the hungry? Do we give water to those who are thirsty? Do we invite the stranger in? Do we clothe those who are naked? Are we caring for the sick? And right there in that list, are we visiting the prisoners? Our attitudes and our behavior show the fruit of our faith. They show what our relationship with Jesus looks like. This is not about earning our way into heaven. This is not about earning our salvation. That is only secured through Jesus on the cross. But our faith should be obvious. We are called to love God and we are also called to love our neighbour. And that means caring for those who are like us and who we like and who we enjoy hanging out with and also caring for those who are not like you and not like me and people who perhaps we really struggle to identify with. How we treat each other is that representation of our relationship with Jesus. And so Prison Fellowship's mission is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with prisoners, ex-prisoners and their families. We are often caring for those who are not like us. We are often caring for those who we really struggle to like. And we are showing the compassionate and the merciful heart of God to those who are not easy to love, to those who have done terrible things. There are people in here who are still loved by God. Even those who we perhaps have very little in common with. We minister to the broken, to the messed up, to the addicted, to the confused, to the lonely, to the hurting, to the smelly, to the angry. But we're a ministry that says the world may hate you, but there is a God who loves you still. They know, they're very clear about the fact that there is a community out here that doesn't think much of them. And so when we are able to go in and say, you know what, we'll sit next to you. We'll listen to your story. We'll hear what you have to say and we will love you and we will tell you about a God who loves you. Then that speaks very powerfully. Many times our volunteers are asked, how could God still love me? Doesn't he know what I've done? And we say, of course he knows what what you've done. But you're still his child and God loves his kids. 
So yes, as we read there, there is a judgment day coming when God's perfect justice will be meted out. It's part of his character. But God's character is also that love and compassion and mercy and his desire that all people would come to him. All people. Sometimes I think we struggle with that. I can see how God can love these people, but when we get to there, that's, that's a much harder ask. When we're talking about people who have done that kind of thing, offended in that way, God loves all people. And when they turn and come back to him, he wraps his arms around them and says, welcome home, prodigal son. I love you. Part of acting like sheep, where there is real evidence of your faith in Jesus, is being obedient to the shepherd's voice, to listening to the shepherd's voice and being obedient to it. Just as I close, Jesus' words uh, in Matthew 25 uh, could not be more serious. He's really, he's talking about, there's a judgment day coming. The separation on that day will actually be final. And we are called to live as his sheep, where the evidence of our faith is really clear, where we care for those around us, especially those who are not like us, especially those who are hard to like. The beauty of this is that that's all God requires of us. God's desire is that everyone would come to us and if we live as obedient sheep, caring for those around us, then he will do the rest. So can I encourage us all this morning to live in such a way that there is evidence of our faith and that through our actions, through our time, through our money, through our prayers, that we care for the least of these.